going on guys? Victor here. Just wrapped up a day fishing with my good buddy Chris Lowe right here. How's it going? We just spent the day commercial fishing, filled up the coolers. We got some bluefish. We got some pompanos in there. Some other stuff mixed in as well. Jacks, mackerel, all around exciting day. So uh, hope you guys enjoy. First pompano for the boys. Is it? Is it? It's digging like a pompano, oh, we'll yeah. see. Oh, dude, it's a nice one. Is it a dinner plate? It's a paycheck for you, that's what it is. <laughs> nice fish. All right, guys, so we're starting out the morning doing a little pompano fishing. Chris has been on these fish for a while now. This right here is like gold for a commercial fisherman. So, pompano the strongest fish to hold by the gills aren't they yeah they're super slippery too super slippery super strong super good eating and this little guy right here this is like a, what like a 15 dollar fish yeah about surprise he ate the jig oh look at that Ooh, God, oh God, whacked whacked. Him. all right we're gonna get back out there so we're in the inlet and this is what we're doing this is called a goofy jig all it is, it's basically a fancy jig head. It comes in a bunch of different colors and it's weighted. So this is three quarters of an ounce. You got a hook there. The main thing, the main purpose of the jig, I think is just to weight down this guy right here. This is your teaser fly. Nine times out of 10, they'll eat this thing, the smaller thing. This is just to get your lure down there and to keep it on bottom because we're fishing in like 10, 12 feet of water. And all I'm doing is, Oh, Chris is on. It was. Missed it. No, you are on, aren't you? Yeah, missed it. Can't start the day. Whoa. <laughs> I'm what you call you, good. You got demoted from catfish that. to rock. He ate, he ate both hooks, too. <laughs> Pompano, you either find him on the beach or in the in the river or in the inlet. Right now, this time of year, there's a lot of them in the inlet. So you cast out, you're in the mouth right here. Sometimes they're here on the incoming, sometimes they're on the outgoing. And the way that jig works is you bounce it like this and it flutters on the way down. And that weight of that jig will keep that teaser fly down there as well. And that's usually what they eat. So we're just kind of scouting the All area. Right guys, so it is nine o'clock. We've been out here since 7 a.m. jigging for the last two hours and we've gotten two pompanos so far. So um, now we're gonna head out the inlet. And that's the thing about commercial fishing, is you gotta have your options. Oh, right there. I don't think there's anything more oh fun. Gosh, look here behind oh, them. look at that, all of them. Mega school. Nothing more fun than throwing top waters for bluefish. Oh, look at, he just tossed the uh, popper right there. There, there they are, there's the school. There it is. Oh my gosh, eat it. Dude, if Come we on. had the drone right now. Got it. Oh yeah, we're gonna load up on bluefish today, that's for sure. Guess who has no pliers on the boat? This guy. <laughs> Never do. You're lucky I have a pair so, of scissors. The worst possible fish to unhook with no pliers and treble hooks are these things right here. These are bluefish. They will literally rip your finger off. So they don't have the world's biggest teeth, but they have incredible jaw pressure. Definitely gonna have to switch. The treble hook is not gonna cut it. I was lucky to be able to get that one out. So, bluefish like loud, clunky, water displacing stuff like poppers, um, stuff like this with a walk the dog style action pencil poppers, basically any type of plug. You don't want to fish a treble hook, so this guy's got a single hook on there. It'll be easy to unhook, so we'll toss that guy yeah, on. they're here. All right, we are back in action, boys. Head on, Spook Jr. Took the treble hooks off, put a single hook on there. It'll make my life a lot easier. Wow. Oh my gosh, I hope you guys can see this on the GoPro. They're going bananas for this thing. If I had a treble hook on, I'd be hooking them every cast, but I don't want to. <laughs> I 
Look at all of them. That's all bluefish right there. You hear that rattling? That is what they're attracted to when this thing is in the water, making a bunch of noise. Perfect eating size bluefish. And you guys can see this thing looks like a sardine or like a little finger mullet. There it is. It doesn't matter how you jig it, you just gotta reel it and make it look obnoxious in the water. I wonder if this is a bigger one. Oh no, he's foul hooked. Look at him. Hooked in the back, Chris. Is it? Yeah, look literally in the back. Pull him back out. Look at it, as fast as you can reel it, they eat it as fast as you can reel it. You got the biggest one in that school, yep. for sure. The most aggressive one. A right next to the boat. Oh, right next to the boat, he got it. Any? <laughs> That's going in the video. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but I just ate it so bad. Oh. I just sit there and fish now. Oh. Dude, I feel like I dislocated my elbow. <laughs> you need help? No, I'm fine. No! Was that your rod? Yes! Uh, well, it's floating somewhere. It's right there, I see it. Keep an eye on it. Ah, <sighs> that was the dumbest mistake of my life. See it? Nope. Somewhere here. There's no way that that thing is gonna be floating. With a fish attached to it. Well, I know what the title of this video is gonna be. This fish cost me a thousand dollars. Someone's gonna get a real nice present on a dive. Well, boys and girls, I uh. But then lose it to anything grand. Lost the rod and reel. That van stall was probably like $700, rod like 200. Between line and everything, let's call it $1,000. Lost it to a bluefish. Now we are trying to snag it. So I feel like the world's biggest Guggen. There's a bluefish on the other end of it. Who knows if it's still on. I don't think the rod and reel is gonna float. I don't think the cork is enough to make that thing float. It's gonna just sink. It's not clear enough to see, and as soon as I got up, I didn't see it. We barely saw the cork, so it's drifting away. But it's actually swimming. Starting off 2021 real strong. Hey, at least I'm not having as bad of a day as this guy right here. Don't ask us how. There's a lizard out here in the ocean, just chilling. He's not having a good day either. We tried for about 30 minutes to try to get the rod and reel. We're not gonna find it. It is way too murky, so. You guys can make your boy feel a little bit better. Like this video right now. It helps us out as creators with YouTube's algorithm. So. Oh, nice Big one? Definitely got a nice one. Yeah. I'd say that's the biggest one of the day so far. What is it? 23? What did I hook? That's all you need. Right. How much you guys help you for? We're averaging like normal size is one to two. You get like a five, six, seven pounder occasionally. It's a good one. If you guys are wondering what are they doing in this little barrel right here, we'll catch like 10 or 15. They're not out of the water very long and then we'll put them on ice. But when you're in them, you're trying to get as many in the boat as possible while you're in a frenzy. And Chris is gonna sell all these. He has his license to do so, so they're not going to waste. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we're in the meat, boys. So Chris and I came back into the inlet. So we, I think I got a pompano on. I'm trying to get into your engine. Oh, it's the right kind. Oh, we're in them. For, for comparison, a poor man's pumping out. Okay, hold on, Mr. Commercial Fisherman. That fish right there, that jack, how much can you sell that for? That's probably like 
75, 80 cents a pound, it's a two to four jack. Now the Pompano on the other hand, around the same size, how much can you sell that for? Anywhere from four to seven dollars a pound. Okay, so you guys see that seven times the value of this fish's life versus that fish's life. Personally, I think Pompano are overrated for the price. Don't get me wrong, they're delicious fish. But I think if people got the stigma out of their head of eating jacks and blue runners and ladyfish and such, they would appreciate that fish so much more because I guarantee you there's not seven times the amount of flavor in this fish as there is in this fish. Why do you have to put blue runner in that category? You love blue runner. It's amazing. You put it in the trash category, it's still not good for you. No. Oh, dude, I got whacked. Are you kidding me? I am telling you, I got whacked. I got put on a yellow, apparently. I told you, Chris. They're there. They're there. Mellow yellow. Coast car coming in. Oh, over. this is going to be a good one. Oh, look how fast that boat is. They are such cool boats. Man, everything I thought about Pompano was wrong. I used to tell people that they crush it on the first strike and it's a reaction. No, they sit there and they, they study it, dude. I'm telling you. Yeah. They observe the jig. You think it's a fleeing crab or shrimp? They want to watch it. And I think they peck it a couple times trying to crush it with that, that sharp head or that point on their head. Something. I think it's a good one, dude. Unless I'm just getting work. No, that's a good I one. could be getting work. Nah, he was hooked in the belly, that's why. Well, hooked in the belly. Look at his tail. Oh, look. That's a, that's a healed over wound. Looks like a shark or barracuda or something tried to eat it. I'm usually not a believer in color. I usually think it's pretty overhyped, but what are you fishing? Pink and chartreuse. Pink, pink and chartreuse. I'm fishing yellow chartreuse and I'm two for two now. So maybe the color really does matter. The thing that people say matters with color, you got a yellow jig, chartreuse this, there's a different tint to every water, no matter where you're at, or incoming or outgoing tide. So if you try to make something noticeable in that color water with that contrast, it's gonna stand out more. So his color may just blend in too much with this water color. Yellow, yellow. Dude, they're chewing, Chris. Dude, you gotta get in the game. Come on, we're paid by the pound. I don't have to be in the game if my striker's good. I.e. you. Well, your striker is a negative 1,000 in the hole for the day, so. Oh, you gotta get, love a good pompano chew. And guess what? We got the whole inlet to ourselves right now. Yup. Oh, that's, this is a better one. This is a bigger one than the other one. Oh yeah. A dinner plate? Yeah, this is a good one, Chris. He wasn't fighting at first, but he woke up. There oh yeah. Is. Ha! Tell me how that ladyfish didn't jump till the very end. Wow. That's a good one. Buy any sense? That's new. Nice. Dinner plate, Chris. Dinner plate. Oh! That's a dinner plate. Wow. Like a mini permit. Now that's a good one. Now wow. that's, that's a paycheck. So back out here on the beach side, we probably got like eight pompano in the box and we're still throwing these hard type lures. This is a head on spook and all the stuff that we use today, you guys can find linked below. Oh my. Woo! Huh? De decent one for sure little undergunned. I normally wouldn't be using this reel for something like this because we're trying to catch as many as possible in a short amount of time and... Did he thump it? Oh, he thumped it hard. 
Yeah, these are decent wow. sized bluefish. These fish kind of hunt in like a wolf pack mentality and they'll come up six at a time and just charge your lure and you'll hear this real loud popping sound and me and him were talking. I don't think that they're trying to swallow that bait head on. They don't have the biggest teeth, but they do have some teeth, but they have an incredible drop, jaw pressure. So they can come up to something and just chomp its tail off or injure it. Now that whole pack will rip it to shreds. If we put out a live bluefish, a bluefish this size would eat it to shreds. They're very carnivorous. They're almost like, if I would compare one fish, saltwater fish to a piranha, it would be these guys right here. That's definitely a pompano. Yeah, it is, isn't it? That's a pompano. Isn't that insane? That's not a small pompano either. They devoured a pompano. That's why the pompano are in the inlet hiding. Oh my gosh. Let's take a picture of that. So this is our haul. Probably one, two, three, four. I'm gonna guess like 30 bluefish, 25 bluefish, something like that. What you think? Yeah, probably. Florida. You know, you have a ton of little boats like this. We saw little boats all day long. And a lot of people probably think that a commercial boat has to be this huge operation, something you see like on a shrimp boat where it's just 50 feet long and there's nets everywhere, but that's not how it is. A lot of um, the commercial fish you guys get in markets comes from small operations like this, a lot of local business, and it's everywhere across the state. Everything from mullet, jacks, mackerel, Swordfish that you guys get in Florida generally comes from Florida. Dolphin, there are tons of commercial fishermen. It's not just like this giant monopoly on it. It's hardworking guys like Chris right here. I try. That's it. All you can do is try. You don't know they're biting unless you go. That's right. So what he's gonna do now is put them in the truck, take them to what you guys call the slab, right? Yep. Yep, just the commercial market. Um, I sell my fish in Sebastian, but there's markets from Cape Canaveral all the way down to Miami. Um, I sell the Seafood Atlantic. They're based out of Cape Canaveral and they just, there's one here in Stewart, but I, since I live in Sebastian, I just choose to go up there and sell my fish. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. Big thank you to Chris for taking me out. And uh, as always, subscribe if you haven't already, like this video, comment below what you guys wanna see next and I'll catch you in the next one.